Buongiorno! Hello art friends! Today we're going to be making pizza slice sculptures inspired by artist Klaus Oldenburg and Peter Anton. So let's find out which art supplies you need and let's get started! So these are the supplies that you're going to need in order to create your pizza sculpture. The first thing that you're going to need is cardboard and that cardboard can be cardboard that you cut down from a box. It can be cardboard that's an insert from any type of packing materials. Um, it's just going to be the base of our sculpture. So you just want kind of a small piece. You're gonna determine how big of a slice of pizza that you're gonna create, but we definitely need the cardboard. The next thing that you're going to need is a brown paper bag. So that could be a lunch bag. It can even be a big brown grocery bag from the store. I cut mine down already and I'm gonna remove that handle. But we're gonna take that brown paper bag and we're gonna wrap it around the cardboard. I'm gonna show you how to do that. That is gonna be the crust of our pizza. So you're not gonna see much once we put the tomato sauce on there and the cheese, but you will see it at the top for the crust. So you will need a brown bag or some type of like brown packing material. The next thing you're going to need is tape. So if you have masking tape at home, this is great tape. It'll hold your sculpture together. If not, you can use the clear tape. Both will work fine. The next thing you need is newspaper or tissue paper. So not a very big size, just a small piece of newspaper, tissue paper, or even if you don't have any of those, you can just use like notebook paper. What we're trying to do is pack some into our sculpture. We're gonna stuff it in there and that's just to add a little bit more volume so it's not so flat. The next thing that you need is paint and the paint is to create the sauce and the cheese. So if you have red paint, yellow and white, we need those three colors. The yellow and the white are gonna be mixed together to create that cheese color. And the red, of course, is for the tomato sauce. If you don't have the paint colors, you can use a red marker or a crayon to do the sauce. And I will show you how to do that. And then I'll show you another option for the cheese if you don't have the paint materials at home. The next thing that you need is white paper or colored paper. And that is to create the toppings for your pizza. So. If you have white paper or copy paper, that's great. You can even use colored paper. On my sample, I did a combination of both. Some of the things I just drew on white paper and then the pepperoni, the broccoli and the pepper, I drew it on colored paper and used a little coloring detail to add some more texture onto it. So if you have both, that's awesome. You're gonna need scissors, obviously, to do your cutting. You're going to need glue. So if you have Elmer's glue, you can use that. Even a glue stick will work to add your toppings onto it. You're gonna need a pencil, obviously, to do your sketching. Um, coloring materials, you're gonna need crayons or markers, again, just to add onto the things that you create. And then the last thing that you need is the pizza topping sheet. That is just a guide to help you with drawing some of those toppings on here. What I try to do is include a lot of different toppings that might appeal to everyone. You don't have to put them all on here. You can pick and choose the ones that you want, but use this as a drawing guide to help you determine what type of toppings you're going to put on your pizza. If there's a topping that you wanna put on that you don't see on the sheet, feel free to create your own and be inspired to create your own original topping on your slice of pizza. So now, you're gonna gather up all of your art materials and then we're gonna get started. Okay, our first step in creating our pizza sculpture is creating the base. So you need your cardboard and you need a pencil. I'm gonna sketch mine with a marker just so that you can see it. The top part of our pizza is gonna be curved. We know that a slice of pizza has a triangle shape, but the top part by the crust is curved because it's baked in a pan. So at the top of your cardboard, you're going to make that same curved line. Think of it like a flattened rainbow or a sad face. You're just gonna go from one side to the other. And again, you're gonna to have to determine how big or how small your slice of pizza is going to be. Look at the supplies that you have, the cardboard and the brown bag, and then you can determine the size that you want it to be. So I'm gonna use a ruler 
because I know some of you like it to be very precise. So what I tell students sometimes, if you're going to make a triangle, just kind of put your little guide point at the bottom. So I think I'm going to make mine to right about here. And then I'm just going to line up my ruler. So I'm going to go up to the top of the crust and connect it down to that little dot. And I'm just going to make one line there. And then same thing on the other side. Top to my little point. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to get cut out. It's going to get covered in paper. But that just gives you the basic shape of your slice of pizza. And then we're going to cut it out. Okay, we are ready now to cut out our slice of pizza. So make sure you have your scissors. Make sure you have a nice strong hand. I know it's challenging and a little tiring cutting through cardboard, but just take your time, follow your guidelines. What I tell students is really open up your scissor blades all the way and kind of chomp down. You don't have to do so many cuts through. And just follow that pencil line all the way down. Some of these scraps that you're cutting out, you may even want to keep for another project in the future. Okay, so now we have our slice of pizza and we're gonna get it ready to be wrapped in the brown paper crust. Okay, now we're ready to wrap our cardboard pizza slice in our brown crust paper. So you need your cardboard slice, you need your brown paper, you need scissors, and you need tape. My slice of pizza is about six by nine, and the paper, the brown paper, is about 12 by 12. So I know that I need a bigger piece of brown paper than the size of my slice because I have to wrap the entire thing. So again, look at your slice of pizza, see how big it is, and make sure you have enough of the brown paper bag to cover it. So try to find a corner where you can start off wrapping. So I'm gonna take my corner of the paper here and put the point of the pizza slice in there. That way I don't have to really worry about creating that little angle. And what you're going to do is fold it. So come over and just crease down that side. Now, if you're using a brown grocery bag like me, it's a thicker paper, so you really have to crease that down. Now I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to press that down there. Okay, you're going to do the same thing this way. You're going to fold your paper in. Again, crease it, really make sure it's nice and tight on there, it's right up against your slice of pizza. And again, another piece of tape, I want to put that there. And I might go in and just add one more extra piece just to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. Remember, we don't want any tape being revealed on this side. Now I have a bunch of this brown paper at the top and I don't need all that. So I'm just gonna kind of follow the line there and trim that off. I'll take my scissors and cut that piece off. I don't need that anymore. And I think since I have one extra little piece of tape, I'm just gonna stick that right up there. Okay, so again, this is gonna be the back. You're not gonna see that. This is gonna be the front. So once you have your brown paper bag on there, it's not going anywhere, you're gonna take your newspaper or your tissue paper and we are going to stuff it in here just to again, create a little bit more of a thicker slice so it's not so flat. So I'm just gonna flip this in half, crumble it up, and it's like a little pocket up at the top. And I'm going to Open it up very carefully. And I just want to show you what I'm doing in there. So I'm kind of putting that into the bag. And instead of like jamming my hands in there, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to poke that down so that it gets a little bit further down into the sculpture. 
Okay, now I'm going to take my other little piece, crumble this up, put this in. Again, just push it down a little bit. You might want to use a pencil just to kind of guide it in there because our can won't be able to fit in there. Okay, and now I'm going to be ready to fold the top. Okay, the next part is the crust. So you have your brown paper bag attached to your pizza slice. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold the crust, just like how the crust looks here. It has that little bit of texture to it, gives it a realistic feel. So you're just going to fold it down towards the point. As you're folding though, you're crumbling it with your finger. See how I'm kind of smashing it up and making it kind of bumpy. We don't want it like a nice folded paper. We want it kind of rough. I'm just trying to create that texture at the top. And what I do is I kind of fold it down and then I put pressure on it. So I'm just going to hold it. Sometimes I'll tell my students to count to 10 or count to 20 want to get those little creases in there. I want it to really look like a realistic slice of pizza. So as you're holding it, maybe you can think about what type of toppings am I going to put on my pizza? Am I going to put my favorite toppings on? Am I going to put a bunch of different toppings just so I can try out different colors and different shapes? Am I going to be original and unique and add something that maybe someone's never put on a pizza before? So think about that as you're being patient and you're creating your cut crust. Think that you're almost like a little pizza chef. Okay, that seems good. That's going to stay. So the next part is creating the sauce. If you have the red paint, you're going to get that set up, get your paintbrush, get your paint and a paper towel. And I'm going to show you how to paint that. If you don't have red paint, you can use a Sharpie marker. Okay. Like a red Sharpie marker. You can use a regular red marker, like a Crayola marker or even a crayon. And you're going to color this whole triangle. Okay. The whole entire thing you're going to color in now. Try to do your best, really making it covered. Really try to get that coverage on there with coloring. We don't want to see any of the brown poking through because it's not going to cover as well as paint does. But really at the end, we put cheese on here, we put topping. So when you look at it, you only really see kind of the red at the top. So get whatever materials you have because then we're going to start adding the sauce. Okay, so you have your red paint, your tomato sauce, you have your brush, your paper towel. Remember, if you're painting, protect the area that you're painting on, either with newspaper or scrap paper, and we're going to get started. So what you want to look at is the pizza slice. Um, we don't want the tomato sauce going all the way up to the crust. We want it just to leave a little bit of room there. That's where we see a little bit of that crust, and then our tomato sauce goes all the way down. So just like on the finished sample here. Okay, and we're gonna paint the whole entire thing red. I know we're gonna have a lot of cheese on there, but again, when we do the cheese, I'm gonna give you a choice whether you're gonna cover it or leave some spots red. So it's better just to cover this whole entire surface here with the red paint. So dip into your red paint. What I try to do is I just create a little line for myself. So I'm just gonna go across the top. And once I get that line in there, I know that I'm not gonna pass that. And remember, always smooth out when you're painting. You don't want any clumps of paint on there. And I can just pull that down. So you're going to cover one coat of paint should be fine. You might have to go back and do two layers. So what I tell my students always to do is go in, give it one coat of paint, nice, even brush strokes. And if you see that that brown paper bag color is coming through or the red color is not as vivid as you want it to be, good thing I have my scrap paper there, then I would say go back and, and give it another coat of paint. 
I'm using acrylic paint. It dries very fast. If you're using acrylic or a temper paint, which is what we use at school, it's water-based. Again, that also dries fast. So just give it that drying time before you put that other layer on there. Because sometimes if you don't, the first layer kind of goes away as you're brushing on your second layer with the paintbrush. Now I'm just gonna hold my hand up here because I don't want the red tomato sauce on my hands. Okay, I'm just gonna get in that little spot. And again, going back over. And just making sure the whole thing is covered. So let it dry. Take a look at it once that first layer dries. If you think it's good to do, good to go, we're gonna move on to the cheese. If not, you can go back, give it another layer of the red paint, and then we'll be ready to add our cheese. Okay, did somebody say cheese? It is time to put our cheese on the pizza. So if you have the paint, make sure you have your white, your yellow, your paintbrush is clean, you've rinsed off the red paint from it, and even keep the red paint out because I'm gonna show you how we may add a little bit of that into the white and yellow. If you don't have paint, don't be upset because here is a very creative solution to creating the cheese. And I hope one thing that you've learned from creating art at home and using limited supplies or even using recycled materials to create art is that it's teaching you to be creative and think outside the box. That's really how you're gonna build your creativity and your art skills and it helps you develop and become a better artist. So if you don't have the paint, what you can do on a white piece of paper is sketch out the shape of the cheese. Kind of looks like a tooth, right? It's kind of bumpy. It's not a perfect triangle, just like if cheese would melt on the pizza. And then what you're gonna do is you can cut it out, or you can color it first and then cut it out, and use a variety of crayons. So what I did was I used a little bit of yellow, yellow orange, and even a little bit of brown. I really love crayons. I think that they do such a terrific job when you try to add value and color things in. And quite honestly, I think this looks like realistic cheese. So if you don't have the paint, here is a great option, a great alternative to you creating your cheese out of white paper and crayons. For the people that do have the paint, what you're gonna do is take your white and your yellow. So I'm just gonna scoop up some of my white onto my plate. And I'm gonna take some of my yellow. I tell my students when you're mixing paint, it's always better to start with a little less. I can always go in and make the color darker, but it's harder once the color is dark to get it lighter. So I'm just going to blend those together. Okay, may add just a little bit more white in there. So this is not really the color I want for my cheese. I want it to be maybe a little bit more orangey. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of that red, just a little bit, because I can always make it darker. You don't even need to clean your brush, just go in and dip right into that red, because we know red and yellow make orange. I'm gonna put that right in there. I'm gonna mix that up. Some more yellow on there. Okay, that's a little bit more what I was looking for for the cheese color. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna paint your cheese on here. What you may wanna do first is use a pencil and sketch out that shape very lightly. You may just want to go in and know you're going to have some cheese and just kind of comes around. Doesn't need to be perfect. If you want to keep some spots of the tomato sauce coming through, you can certainly do that. I'm just going to bring this down here. And maybe in here, I'm going to have a little bit of that red tomato sauce coming through, so I know I'm going to keep that part red. So now at least I have my guidelines and I can go in and I can start painting my cheese. Okay, good trick is just to take your brush and kind of follow that line that you created. 
Again, it's going to create that clean edge. Now, because we're painting with a lighter color on top of a darker background, this is going to require you to do two coats of paint, two layers of paint. So again, do your first coat, let it really dry, go back in and give it another one. It's going to come down this way. So much easier if you paint those guidelines first the outer edge and then you can quickly go in and paint the inside so i know i have to go around there because i'm leaving my little tomato sauce coming through you know what maybe i'll put another little one over here okay now go in with your big strokes just paint that whole area you know when i'm done i might look at it and say you know what i think i want a little more cheese on this side just get that first layer on there. You can see it's still very translucent. It's not solid, right? So we wanna go back and put another layer of the yellow white paint on there, given a layer of cheese. Okay, so you finish up painting, you do your two layers, maybe even three, see how it looks. And then we're gonna go on to the very exciting toppings for our pizza. So now it is time for our toppings. We have our pizza slices. Here's mine. And I have to say the one that has the marker sauce and the cutout crayon cheese looks bellissima. Brava. Nothing wrong with having different options when you create art. So now we're ready for the toppings. And usually when I order pizza, I'm a pretty plain type of person. Sometimes I'll get pepperoni. I've even tried a pineapple, which I have to say was pretty good. But for this, this is different. For our pizza sculpture, I think the toppings really make it. So I want to create a pizza that has pizzazz. So I am going to use different toppings, probably not the ones I would put on the pizza if I was going to eat it, but I think they're going to add a lot of color and a lot of creativity to our pizza slice. So look at your pizza topping paper and you either have printed it out or you have it up on your computer and use this as your reference guide. It's going to help you determine which toppings you want and even help you sketch them out. Okay, you can use white paper or you can use colored paper. If you have both, I would suggest using both. I really like the combination of both and I use those in mine. You're gonna sketch in pencil, but if you have a thin Sharpie after the sketching, one that looks like this, or even a micron marker, something that's a permanent thin marker, even a black pen, something that you can outline your pencil lines. I just think that outlining, especially these tiny little toppings, is really going to make your sculpture stand out. So if you haven't got one of those and you have them somewhere in your house, you can grab that and just put that to the side because when you get done with sketching, you're going to outline. So I'm going to just demonstrate one little sketching that I'm going to do because I've created some of my toppings already. And I'm just going to sketch, I guess, the broccoli. The broccoli kind of looks like a little bit like a tree. Comes around. And remember, you don't need a lot of paper. Whatever little scrap of paper that you have around your house, even sometimes envelopes, anything that was going in the recycling bin can be put to use for these toppings on your pizza. So I'm just going to go in, make my little lines in here. Okay, so once I have it sketched out, now I can use my permanent marker or my pen. And I'm going to just go over all those pencil lines. Really take your time with the sketching of the toppings. You want them to look realistic. And although the pizza itself looks great, the slice of pizza, it's the toppings that I think really make it stand out. It adds a little bit of humor to it. And plus, it makes everybody's slice of pizza unique because everyone's going to choose something different to put on there. 
broccoli is funny. It look, does look like a little bit like a tree. I might just add some little lines down here. Okay, now I'm going to erase whatever pencil lines I didn't cover with the Sharpie. Get those off my paper. So when you're done sketching and outlining with either your marker or your black pen, now you're ready to color. I'm going to use crayons to color mine. I really like using crayons and blending with them. It can add lots of detail. So I'm gonna start coloring my broccoli with these three colors. Most of the time when I do color, I just don't use one. So I'm just gonna start with this color. Remember how hard or how light you press will determine the value, the lightness and darkness of the color. So if I really want to make it darker over here, okay, I may press darker there, and a little bit lighter here. It's also going to give it more of a sense of being realistic. I'm going to go in and use this green. I like to put them sometimes one on top of the other or blend it right next to it. So just really take your time with the coloring. The details, like I said before, are what make, in my opinion, the pizza sculpture really stand out. It adds humor. And because we're going to have a variety of toppings on there, it's going to add lots of interest, keeps people really looking at your work for a while. And that's always what we're trying to do, have people look at our work. I'm just going to press a little darker in here. Okay, so you are going to finish all of your sketching. Remember, determine your toppings. Finish sketching them either on white paper or colored paper, outline them, erase your pencil lines, choose what you want to color it in, either crayons, colored pencils, markers are fine, you can even use a combination of all three. I'll check back with you when you're done, and then it'll be time for us to add those very cool toppings onto our pizza. So now we're ready to glue on our toppings. You've done a great job of coloring them and cutting them out carefully. And now we're gonna add them onto our slice of pizza. So what I always like to do before I glue things down is plan out where I like them to go. Because sometimes I might wanna change it around and if I glue it, I won't be able to do that. So I'm gonna start with my bigger items first. I have my pineapple slice. I'll put my pepper over here. Kind of thinking about colors. I don't want to keep the same colors next to each other. Maybe I'll put my bacon over here. Have my broccoli. This little slice of tomato might look cute down here. I'm ready to put my little meatballs on there. I think I'm going to put that little mushroom up at the top. I have this little slice of onion. Maybe I'll stick that over here. Now I just have these little remaining meatballs that I'll scatter throughout the pizza. Put one down here. Maybe another one up there. So I like the way it looks. I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to glue everything down. Remember, you can use Elmer's glue, or if you don't have Elmer's glue, you can use a glue stick. Just be really careful putting it on the back. And because you have a sculpture, you're going to have to press things on, maybe hold them for a little bit so that it sticks on. So you take your time gluing. I'm going to do the same, and then I'll check right back with you. So as they say in Italian, finito, finished. We have uno, due, Tre pizzas with pizzazz made two different ways, but still awesome. I hope you had fun today creating your pizza sculpture. I know I did, and now I'm ready for some real pizza. 
You did awesome. Keep up the great work. Until next time, keep smiling, keep dreaming, and keep creating. Ciao!